Greetings from RC Mojo. Today we've got more of the XV01 build to be getting on with. Bag D to be exact. So without further ado, let's get going. Step 18. Okay, this is similar to the front with a couple of minor changes. As always, the first job is to put the screws into a pot. This time, due to the quantity, I'm going to use two, so bits are easier to spot. For this part, we will be needing two 6mm screws, four 10mm countersunk screws, and two thin M3 nylock nuts. From the plastic trees, we need parts 1 and 2 from the JJ tree. They're sided, so keep them separate. Two NN10s, which are 2mm shims, and two NN14s, which hold the nuts in place on the chassis. The first thing we're going to need to do is fit the nylocks. Pop one into one of the hex holes at the top of the chassis behind the battery box. Make sure the nylon part of the nut is facing upwards. Now fit one of the NN14s on top with its nub going into the top of the nut. Then fit one of the 6mm screws to hold it all together. Of course there's two to do, so pop the other nut in its hex hole, fit the retainer and pop in the screw. Grab one of the suspension mounts and its shim and slot it into one of the slots on the chassis. Make sure you fit the right one on the right side. Check the diagram just to be safe. Flip the chassis over while holding the mount in place and fit two of the countersunk screws. Repeat with the other one. Make sure all the screws are just nice and snug and we're done. Step 19. Not many bits to find. We will start with NN25, a 2mm shim. Four of those plastic ball widgets, NN2. Two NN23s, which we may have accidentally removed from the tree last time. And of course there's two F1 suspension arms. Okay, screws. We need two 10mm countersunk, two of the little M2.6, two ball ends, and two suspension pins with the slot in the middle. There's also part JJ3, the rear suspension mount which will magically appear a bit later when required. The first thing we'll do is fit the ball ends into the arm. You need to pay attention here as the holes aren't quite the same on both sides. Here's a close-up of what's in the instructions. You can see the holes are slightly offset on the two sides of the arm. We want the inner hole that's in line with the ball moulded in. When you've found the right hole, grab one of the ball ends and screw it in. And repeat for the other arm. Now fit one of the M2.6 screws in one of the inner holes on the outside of the arm. This is one half of the pin retaining system. And again, repeat for the other arm. OK, now the fun part. Pop a suspension pin through the arm's innermost holes, from the rear, the same side of the arm as the ball end. Fit an NN23 spacer, then one of the NN2 balls. On the other side, just fit one of the balls. Not too surprisingly, you have to do this with the other arm too. Just like with the front, be careful you don't drop anything, as the balls can be eager to make a break for it. Pop both arms into the suspension mounts on the chassis. Left-right orientation doesn't matter. Just make sure the ball end is to the rear of the chassis. Slot the 2mm shim into the slot in the chassis. Fit the loose ends of the suspension pins into the JJ3 mount, and pop it into the slot above the shim. Flip the chassis over and fit the remaining countersunk screws into the bottom of JJ3. Do them up so they're just snug, and we're done. Step 20. The rear hubs. Nothing much here to catch you out. You will need a nice fresh knife blade though. Right. Parts we need. Two E1s, the hubs. Two NN27s, which I suppose are trunnions. A pair of stub axles and a urethane bushing. For fixings, there are two of those lovely ball nuts, four 10mm screws, and two 12mm screws. Lastly, there's the two wheel bearings. First job, take the urethane bush, lay it down on its side, and carefully cut it in half. Use a good sharp exacto or equivalent, or you'll just rip it to shreds. Grab one of the stub axles, and put one half of the bush into the cup with the cut face down and repeat with the other one. Now we need one of the hubs and a trunnion. 
line the trunnion up on top of the hub, the holes will only match up with the centre holes, and fit two of the 10mm screws. Now of course, make up the other hub in just the same way. Ok, next we're going to make the two hubs sided. Pop one of the 12mm screws through the trunnion, and fit one of the ball nuts on the end. Do it up nice and tight. For the other hub, do the same, but put the screw in from the other side. Pop one of the bearings over a stub axle and press it into the hub. If you keep the parts parallel, it should slide in nicely. Again, we need to do the same with the other hub. You also want to fit some of the foam dust covers. You can do it now, or wait for me to notice, because I forgot. <laughs> Step 21. Straight to it. Grab a 10mm countersunk screw and 4 8mm, the toothed belt, and finally, its time has come, the rear gearbox. Ok, take the belt and wrap it around the front pulley. Make sure the teeth on the belt mesh with the pulley. Now wrap the belt around the rear pulley, making sure it goes under the belt tensioner. Keep a little tension on it so the belt stays in position, and slot the gearbox into the chassis. While holding the gearbox in place, flip the chassis over and fit the four 8mm screws into the bottom of the gearbox. Use the cross pattern technique for tightening them up. Lastly, fit the 10mm countersunks through the battery box into the gearbox brace. Make sure the screws are nice and snug. Step 22. More turnbuckles. And I'm sure you've been looking forward to making them. This time we'll be needing four plastic ball cups two turnbuckles and two short suspension pins, two dog bone drive shafts, two M2.6 screws, and from the NN parts tree you'll need two number 19 spacers. Ok, first job, make up the turnbuckles. Just as before, a ball cap on each end, grab the hex with some pliers, and do them up remembering one end has a reverse thread. Keep going until you have a pair of turnbuckles that match the two scale diagram. To the chassis now, pop a dog bone drive shaft into one of the diff drive cups. The instructions want some grease on these, but I'd run them dry as the grease will pick up a lot of grit and wear out the parts very quickly. Partially insert one of the pins into the end of the suspension arm. Take one of the hubs, you want the one that puts the ball end towards the front of the chassis. Line it up with a pin and press it through. Now take one of the turnbuckles and pop it onto the ball end on the gearbox brace and then the hub. You should be able to do this by hand so you don't squash the plastic ball caps. Repeat on the other side. Take the M2.6 screws and fit them into the holes next to the outer pins on the suspension arms. Step 23. The belt cover. So, we need NN1, the rear section, L3, the tensioner cover, L1, the belt cover itself, a single 6mm screw, two 8mm countersunks, and a regular 10mm screw. The tensioner cover needs to be trimmed a bit. I want to check how it fits though, so I'll trim it up when we get to fitting it. In the meantime, grab NN1 and slot it in so the flat bit goes under the rear pulley. You might need to jiggle it about a bit to get it to go. When it's in, pop the 10mm screw into its hole that lines up with the hole in the gearbox we left a number of steps ago. Now, take the belt cover and line it up over the battery box. The little tabs on the chassis should locate into the little sockets in the belt cover. When they're all in, flip the chassis over and fit the two countersunk screws through the battery box. There's not much plastic to thread into, so watch out for stripping the threads. Now, I'm going to try fitting the tensioner cover without modifying it. And yes, it goes on, but it seems to rub on the pulley, so not surprisingly, Tamiya were right. You need to trim a little bit off the flat bit. Makes me wonder why it's there. Is there a variant of the XV01 where you don't need to? A mistake in the mould, maybe. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Grab a nice sharp knife and trim 3mm off the end of the flat bit. Offer it up over the tensioner and make sure it's fully home. Pop the remaining 6mm screw in the top. Like the belt cover, there isn't a lot of meat for the screw, so do it up gently. Step 24. The dampers. 
They're fairly easy to put together, just a bit repetitive. Right, parts up first. Eight O-rings, four damper shafts, and eight Eclipse. From the plastic parts tree, we need four Q1s, four Q3s, four V9s, and four V1s, which you'll note are missing from the picture because I was having a conflict between building from memory and trying to build each step per the manual. But never mind, they go together just fine in the end. Right, grab one of the damper bodies and insert two of the O-rings into the bottom. Put a drop of damper oil on and screw on the cap. You'll need to do this on all four, so get a bit of a production line going. The next bit can be a bit fiddly. Take one of the damper shafts and pop an E-clip in the second slot from the end. Drop a piston over the shaft and clip the second E-clip on the top. Just like when we did the pulleys, if you're worried about the clips pinging off into oblivion, work inside a plastic bag, so if they do make a break for it, it can't get far. Make four of them, and it's on to the next stage. Put some oil over the threads at the end of the shaft, pick up one of the bodies and insert the shaft from the top. Be extremely gentle, at this stage you can damage the o-rings leading to leaky dampers. And no one likes leaky dampers. <laughs> Clean up any oil that remains on the shaft outside of the damper. Build up the other three, taking your time with each. And we're done. Well, actually we're not. There's still the V1s to fit, but I'd already moved on to step 25 by the time I got to them. So, see you there. <laughs> step 25. Damper oil. And the bits I didn't do last time. The V1s, which are actually rather nice as they're pre-threaded. So there's no messing about trying to get them on. Just grab the damper shaft with some pliers and some card so you don't damage the surfaces and screw them on. Rinse and repeat for the other three. Okay, step 25 proper. And we need four bladders and four Q2s, which are the damper caps. Right, I'm going to use some 45 weight oil as it's a known viscosity. The Tamiya bottle just says hard, which isn't very useful. Take one of the dampers and slowly fill it until the oil is a millimetre or so below the top. Gently move the shaft up and down a couple of times to release any trapped air. Pop a bladder on the top with its dome down into the oil. You should get a little bit of overspill. Just wipe it with a paper towel. Now fit one of the caps. Be careful not to cross thread it. It needs to sit square on the top of the bladder, or it won't seal, and you'll get leaks. Do the same three more times, and you should be left with a pot of dampers. Step 26. The last step for bag D. This time, we'll be needing the four dampers we put together in the last step, the four springs, four V5s, spring retainers, and two V6s, which are the medium preload spacers. The front and rear dampers go together in the same way, Pop a spring over the body, squeeze it up, and slot in one of the retainers. On two of the dampers, squeeze the springs from the top and clip one of the preload spacers in. These go on the front. Grab the chassis and pop the dampers over the balls on the towers. You should be able to do this by hand, but as the plastic's a bit harder than the other ball caps, you can use a pair of pliers to persuade them. Don't forget, the ones with the preload spacers go on the front, the other two go at the back. And there we have it, some nice silky smooth suspension. Alright, that's it for another video. Next time we'll get the electronics in and have a rolling chassis. So, thanks for watching, hope it's been fun, it has for me. But then I've got a shiny new car to play with. <laughs> If you want to be notified when we upload videos, you can hit the subscribe button and be part of our now 1,000 strong community, which is just brilliant. Didn't think we'd get there before the end of the year, so those that have, thanks for subscribing. Bye. <laughs>